I'm Eddie Cannell. And I'm Tom Cannell. Welcome, everyone. This is the Mortgage Brothers Podcast Show, and today is November 2nd. We love November 2nd. <laughs> What's happening on November 2nd? Yesterday, we had a huge release of the Federal Reserve uh, Jerome Powell came out and spoke, but also we had large, large releases in the economic data world that's going to impact interest rates, uh, the Fed rate, inflation, and our economy. So let's get right into it. Yeah, and a lot of this stuff is like like technical, you know, investing geek, you know, geek nerd talk, but it's really interesting because of how it's affecting us on the mortgage side, on the finance side, all of our lives. So again, we typically don't dive into these numbers this much, this often, but it's really been good over the past, you know, year or so. Yeah, I think you're going to like it today. I mean, like, remember, this is for informational purposes only. But, uh, you know, and if you like what we're doing, be sure to subscribe, comment and like. I mean, what we're doing is diving into these uh, these numbers, but kind of giving you an idea. If you're looking to buy a home, sell a home, uh, if you're a real estate agent, I mean, if you have questions, our job is to answer and to help you out. So be sure to uh, let us know if you have any questions. All right. So right off the bat. 30-year fixed rates today. We'll give you the update on this. This is from the Mortgage News Daily. The survey of all, you know, most rate sheets around the country is we've seen in those 30-year fix coming in at 7.69%. The 15-year fix, we see them coming in at 7.1%. And remember, this is a baseline. This is not the Mortgage Brothers rates, uh, but a baseline that we take over the entire country. All right, for 30-year FHA, 7.14, and 30-year VA, 7.16. Again, the VA and FHA are very, very close. Interest rates have been very volatile, going up and down you know, daily, so be sure to check in if you have a question on where rates are today. Here's the 30-year fix history. You want to just keep on going back to where where have rates been. You can see that where we're at today, I drew this line, this horizontal line that goes all the way back to about 2000 and well, 2000 to 2001, 23 years ago. Wow. We're back to that rate. Uh, yeah, that 7.7 ish rate. And back then they were like, Hey, this is great. Yeah. Right, let's have a party. I've Every- got a seven and a half percent interest rate. <laughs> Look at all the people up here in the eighties. Yeah. With the high rates in the teens, they were celebrating and refinancing all the way down. Oh yeah. All their so parents. Yeah, yeah. Their parents and grandparents were like, Holy mackerel. How did you get seven, seven and a half? Yeah. Unbelievable. Uh, the Fed, Jerome Powell spoke yesterday. And again, the, the now there wasn't much of an announcement because it was the rate was unchanged. They did not move the rates up or down. But we're going to talk about what he did say in his press conference and some of the other releases that it did affect where rates probably will go. And I was going to say, even though he didn't say, you know, go up or go down, a no change is still a huge answer. Yeah. It's kind of like you go to your parents and you're like, hey, can I, can I go to that party that I've wanted to go to? And they're like, my answer is unchanged. That's still a big deal. It's a big no. It just kind of like, I don't know yet. Yeah. You're like, ah, oh, shoot. So even though it wasn't an up or down, still a no change is a big deal. Yeah. Okay. So the Fed rate, this is shows the Fed rate with an overlay of the 30 year fix. So if you put those two interest rates together on a, on a chart, this overlay, you can see how they're very correlated. Now that 30 year fix is moving around all the time, every day it's moving around, but the Fed only meets eight times a year. So it really depends. Sometimes it goes unchanged for, for years. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah. Know? Yeah. Look at it back, you know, near 2010, mm-hmm. it it just, flat for what, six years. Yep. It was very, very low for, during that time and for a very long time. Mm-hmm. So the 30 year fix, so the, the Fed will basically lead, but it doesn't really move very often. And that's uh, why they call it a target. Mm-hmm. They're setting targets. They're like, okay, economy, this is what we kind of want you to do. And then they're, they, they're um, reacting based upon what the market, the economy does. Yeah, absolutely. So the Fed will always react first and then what follows and like, yeah, the 30 year fix of the general economy will. Now, this is something I, observed and tom and i were just talking about this look at the yellow line this is the fed rate i just took away the 30-year fixed so here is the fed rate uh which is about 5.25 right today now look at the common area six times and almost seven that it was at this point it's a very, so where we're at today is a very right. historically significant point. Yeah, it could be super historically significant. It could be just like, wow, that's an amazing coincidence. Yeah, that's right. But, you know, so you have all the way back into the 1960s, the 1980s, the 1990s, 2006, 
And then today we are mm-hmm. right back where that Fed rate is uh, right now. And now this is from the CME group, uh, the Fed what they do, these are the futures traders. Uh, Some of the smartest guys in the world. Yeah, these traders are doing, uh, they're, they're, they're trading futures and they're basically guessing on the, and trading on the futures contracts. So they believe, based on their, their trades, that the Fed rate, which is today is at 5.25 to five, and a, it's, it's in that bracket, 5.25 mm-hmm. to five and a half. But if they believe that the Fed rate will be unchanged Probability says it'll be unchanged until June, June 2024. But the but the chances of it actually coming down sooner than later have just increased over this last couple of days. Right, and also what it's saying is too. Look, there is no um, high um, call for potential increase. Yeah. If it, you look, everything is on the left hand side or right hand side. However, we're looking at that of that green line, meaning there. This is a very you know a big chance that they just don't go up. Yep. So you know, hold for longer, but we're not going to go up. And that's a big deal. Yeah. So look in this column, just so you can see here, the, the, we see this 25.4%. That means that there's a 25.4% chance, according to these traders, that, that that the Fed rate will be unchanged by June. There's a 41% chance it'll go down a quarter, being in this column. There's so a 24% yeah, greater, chance that right. it'll be a, a half a percent lower than where it's at today. Yeah, so there's a higher likelihood in June mm-hmm. that the Feds will come down than they will stay. Yeah. That's not even to mention, they're not even talking about going up. And now May, May 1st, the traders believe that there's almost an even chance that it will go down a quarter or say the same. Yeah. So they're kind of right there teeter-tottering. We could even move our little green line up probably up to yeah. May. Mm-hmm. That's true. All right. So big, the, there's a lot of releases. This is, there's usually not that many releases that are that significant on the, the economy that today or, you know, for Wednesday, it was the, uh, let me show you that. So there's the, Unemployed or the employment report from ADP, Treasury re- announcement stuff, um, purchasing manufacturers, the JOLTS opening, the uh, JOLTS o- job openings report, and then the Fed rate mm-hmm. was released today, and then, then mm-hmm. the press conference from Jerome Powell. So let me just show you on the chart. This is the ten-year bond. This is the yield. Now this looks like it's going over like a whole year, but no, this is just going this over. This is a one-minute chart. A like one-minute chart. Yeah. So there's a lot going on here. So each of these little lines represents one minute. And at five thirty a.m., the announcement from the Treasury was that they're going to issue a few or slow the pace of longer-term Treasury bonds. Now I don't want anyone to be like, you, you, for the audience, I think what. The reaction should be is, well, okay, what, what does that mean? It's actually good news for interest rates. Yeah. And that the, 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 the percent, the yields, so the, the percentage, the 10 year came down immediately from that, from that action. Okay. From that renouncement. Yep. All right. What was, what was next? 7 a.m. that there was the jobs, the jolts, this, this, the jolts job openings were 9.5 million, 9.55 million. They thought it was going to be 9.2. So it was actually yeah, so it's actually more. You know, uh, obviously it looks like more, but what does that mean? It means, you know, employers have more openings, meaning employers are more positive and more optimistic, mm-hmm. which should have a downward uh, or an upward pressure on interest rates. But instead, what did it do? Yeah, the the rates came down. Yeah, it came down. But at the same time at 7 a.m., the, purchase, the manufacturing purchasing uh, managers have their orders for last month came in a lot lower mm. than expected. So they must have put a little more weight on that. So yeah, bad news. There's more weight probably given to that that mm-hmm. that number for the purchasing manufacturers number. Uh, you know, yeah. yeah. So it, anyway, so the rates, the yields came down. So that's another good news for rates. Yep. And then Jerome Powell. Okay, the Fed rate came out at at eleven o'clock. This is this is all Arizona time. It's like four hours later or three and a half yep. hours later. Yep. Jerome Powell starts talking. He starts talking, and all of a sudden he starts saying things that are pretty. Uh, they call it dovish, which means that basically like easygoing. Yeah, little relaxed, giving the impression that that higher rates likely will not be. Well, it would be less likely. Mm-hmm. And all of a sudden, their yields improve even more. So today was a very good day for interest rates on that Wednesday, uh, yesterday for the Jerome, for, for all of this. So this was a good day. Okay, and then Bloomberg just basically does a really good job of having the, the key takeaways from the speech from Jerome Powell. And it basically is saying that there's good reason to believe 
lower rates, lower interest rates um, are very possible. Mm-hmm. There's probably a less likelihood of higher rates. And yes, yeah. So just you're kind of an easing. You yeah. know that the feds have been like so strict and so aggressive, and they're finally like loosening up a little bit. And investors are reading that and they're watching it closely. Yes, and right now you'll see interest rates if if. The stock market has rose immediately as they started feeling like the Fed might not be raising rates for the future. So we saw an increase in in the stocks, kind of the stocks rallying. And so that will happen if rates continue to have or be thought of to come down, there's going to be a rally Mm -hmm. in the stock market. Mm -hmm. Now, if things start actually, if the high interest rates in general start having an effect on the economy, then we'll start seeing the equity of the stock market starting to come or, you know, We'll see them going down uh, on days where you know there's there's significant impacts. Right now, the good right still today is still good news is bad news. Yep, I'm sorry. Unfortunately, bad news is good news. That yeah. is well, the, and, that and is still today. Same, same thing. Deal. Bad news is good news, and good mm-hmm. news is bad news. So mm-hmm. yeah, that that is. That is very. Um, I don't know what we call it, but it should be called like a period we're in. And I can't wait to get out of that. Yeah. I want good news to be good news. Yeah, is that too much to ask? I don't yeah. think so. So we were talking about that last week. Half it seems like half of the time, good news is good news, and other times it's the opposite. So it's well, yeah, back yeah, and lo- forth. looking it back on where you are in the economy. Yeah, 10, 20, 30 years ago, but in the last couple of years, mm-hmm. I mean, bad news is good news, which is just <laughs> weird. <laughs> All right. So if you like what we're doing here, if you need help on your mortgage, if you're looking, if you're trying to think about what whether to buy or not today, uh, you have an application out there for a refinance or purchase. Tom and I would be happy to help. Be sure to comment. Uh, give us a call and subscribe. Okay. Hey, thanks folks. Thank you. Thank you for watching the Mortgage Brothers podcast. If you have any questions, email us at team at azmortgagebrothers.com. And if you like this content, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to the Mortgage Brothers team.